the Umawai dynasty, spanning from 661 to 750 CE, marked a significant chapter in the history of Islam. Established by Mawiyah, who had previously served as the governor of Syria under the Rashidun Caliphate, the Umayyads were the first to claim the title of Caliphate. Their reign was characterized by effective governance and unyielding authority, marked by the suppression of rebellions through forceful means. At the height of their power, the Umayyads presided over a vast empire that extended from North Africa to Spain, Transoxiana to parts of the Indian subcontinent, and numerous Mediterranean islands. While their empire reached its zenith during their rule, internal divisions and civil conflicts eventually weakened their grip on it. In 750 CE, they were overthrown by the Abbasids, a rival Arab faction claiming descent from the Prophet's uncle, Abbas. The Umayyad dynasty's origins can be traced back to a tumultuous period in Islamic history. Following the death of the Islamic Prophet Muhammad, the title of Caliph was assumed by Abu Bakr, marking the beginnings of the Islamic Caliphates. This era, often referred to as the Rashidun Caliphate, saw the rise of four initial Caliphs. Sunni Muslims recognize these four as the Rashidun Caliphs, while Shia Muslims consider only the fourth, Ali, as the legitimate candidate for the Caliphate. The Rashidun Caliphs led full-scale invasions into various regions, expanding the Islamic realm into Syria, the Levant, Egypt, parts of North Africa, the Greek islands, and the entire Sasanian Empire. The succession of Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman saw the continuation of these conquests. However, Uthman's rule was marked by weakness, culminating in his assassination in 656 CE. Ali succeeded him and found himself entangled in managing a disintegrating empire and ensuring justice for his slain predecessor. Ali faced opposition, particularly from Maoya, the governor of Syria and cousin of Uthman. Maoya sought nothing less than the execution of those responsible for Uthman's death, sparking a civil war known as the First Fitna. This tumultuous period saw Ali's assassination at the hands of an extremist group called the Kajites. While they had also targeted Maoya, he survived with minor injuries. Maoya I, who reigned from 661 to 680 CE, established the Sufyanid lineage and was a shrewd politician and diplomat. He convinced Hassan, Ali's son and successor in Kufa, to abdicate in his favor in exchange for a generous pension. Yet, he displayed no mercy toward those he perceived as threats to his rule, often orchestrating their deaths. Mawiya I's reign was marked by stability, making it one of the most prosperous periods since the time of Umar. His administrative reforms included the establishment of a police network, personal bodyguards, and local diwans. He initiated campaigns into regions like modern-day Pakistan and Afghanistan and managed to reclaim territories from the Byzantines. However, most of these gains were later reversed due to internal conflicts following his death. The problems began when Mawiya appointed his son, Yazid, as his successor in 680 CE. Arab society, unaccustomed to dynastic rule, reacted with resentment. Hussein ibn Ali, Hassan's younger brother, and Abdullah ibn Zubair, both significant figures, protested Yazid's accession. In 680 CE, Hussein embarked on a journey to Iraq, planning to gather support and challenge Yazid's rule. However, Yazid dispatched an army to intercept Hussein's forces, leading to the tragic battle of Karbala. Hussein and his small army bravely resisted but were ultimately massacred. This event ignited the Second Fitna, a second civil war in Islamic history. Yazid's reign was marred by further conflict as he attempted to suppress opposition in Medina and besiege Mecca. The Battle of Al-Hara resulted in the devastation of Medina. Following his sudden death in 683 CE, Abdullah continued the revolt for another decade, claiming the title of Caliph. His opponents were unable to maintain control over their territories, and today, Yazid is remembered as a controversial figure in Islamic history. Yazid's son, Ma'oya II, succeeded him but played no part in his father's controversial actions. He passed away within months, signaling the end of the Sufyanid rule. The Umayyad realm, except for Damascus, plunged into chaos. With the ascension of Marwan ibn Hakam in 684 CE, the Umayyad dynasty took a new turn. He had promised that the throne would be passed to Khalid, the younger son of Yazid, upon his death, but intentions in the tumultuous world of politics often shift. The empire was now under the rule of the Marwanids, 
or the House of Marwan, also known as the Hakamites, after Marwan's father, Hakam. His reign began with the recapture of Egypt, which had previously revolted and joined the Zubayrid faction. However, just nine months into his rule, Marwan's life came to an end in 685 CE, leaving the fate of the empire in the hands of his capable son, Obad al-Malik. In 685 CE, al-Muqtar initiated a revolt in Kufa and joined forces with Abdullah against the Umayyads. Al-Muqtar relentlessly pursued those involved in Hussein's murder. When Obad al-Malik sent an army under Ubaidullah to confront the insurgents, the combined forces of the Qufans and Zubarids crushed it. This marked the beginning of al-Muqtar's intent to establish an Alid Caliphate, using Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya, one of Ali's sons, though not from Fatima. This led to a divergence of paths with Abdullah, who also claimed the caliphate from Mecca. Obad al-Malik seized the opportunity to bide his time while his rivals weakened each other. In 687 CE, al-Muqtar met his end at the hands of Zubayrid forces during the siege of Kufa. Though al-Muqtar perished, his revolt laid the foundation for the transformation of Shi'ism from a political group into a religious sect. With the threat in Kufa eliminated, Obad al-Malik turned his attention to Mecca, dispatching his ruthless general, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, to quell the opposition. Though Abdullah had no chance against Hajjaj's formidable army, he refused to surrender, dying in battle in 692 CE. The war had ended, and while Obad al-Malik faced criticism for Hajjaj's brutal actions, he is credited with bringing stability and centralization to the empire. Most notably, he Arabized the entire region under his dominion, a factor that would later aid in the spread of Islam, and he established official coins for his empire. The construction of the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem took place during his reign, likely as a counterbalance to Abdullah's control of the Kaaba. Furthermore, Obad al-Malik's reign witnessed the conquest of North Africa, including Tunis, by 693 CE. The local Berbers, who adopted Islam, played a pivotal role in extending its reach to Spain during the reign of his son, al-Walid. After Obad al-Malik's passing, his son al-Walid I ascended the throne in 705 CE, pushing the boundaries of the empire even further. Under his reign, two of Hajjaj's protégés, Muhammad ibn Qasim and Qutayba ibn Muslim, successfully subjugated parts of modern-day Pakistan and Transoxiana, respectively. The Muslim conquest of Spain began in 711 CE, when a Berber named Tariq ibn Ziyad landed on the Iberian Peninsula, a region that now bears his name, Gibraltar. He defeated the numerically superior Gothic army led by King Roderick at the Battle of Guadalete in 711 CE, paving the way for the conquest of Al-Andalus, Arabic for Spain. By 714 CE, Musa ibn Nusayr, the governor of Ifqir, had reinforced Tariq, and the two had conquered most of Al-Andalus. They were on the brink of invading Europe through the Pyrenees when a sudden order from the Caliph in Damascus halted their advance. However, Walid's attempt to name his own son as his successor rather than his brother, Suleiman, resulted in the latter's refusal to relinquish his claim. Before Walid could resolve the issue, he passed away. Suleiman assumed the office but proved to be a disastrous ruler. He had little regard for Hajjaj and released many prisoners held in his prisons. When Suleiman turned his attention to Constantinople and sent a massive force to conquer the Byzantine capital in 717 CE, it resulted in a costly and humiliating defeat. This marked the first major setback against the Byzantines, and the damage was both permanent and irreversible, halting further expansion. As his death neared, Suleiman realized that his sons were too young to succeed him. He nominated his pious cousin, Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz, Umar II, who ruled from 717 to 720 CE, aimed to improve the empire's internal state. He initiated negotiations with non-Arab Muslims, or Mawali, who opposed Umaway rule. Unfortunately, his reign was cut short when he was poisoned by his own family due to his unwavering commitment to justice and Islamic principles. Despite his short rule, he has earned posthumous fame as the fifth Rashidun Caliph for his just actions and principled stance. Yazid II, another son of Obad al-Malik, assumed the throne in 720 CE, but he proved to be an ineffective ruler. Under his rule, the empire slipped into chaos, and he passed away four years later. As the Umaway dynasty grappled with the aftermath of civil wars, 
The reign of Hisham from 724 to 743 CE marked a turning point. Faced with an empire torn apart by internal conflicts, Hisham was determined to restore order. He reintroduced reforms initiated by Umar II but abandoned by his predecessor, Yazid II. Hisham's rule witnessed a mix of military successes and challenges. In Sindh, a province in modern-day Pakistan, he quashed a Hindu revolt. However, a Berber revolt in western North Africa, particularly modern-day Morocco, erupted in 739 CE. The Berbers were influenced by the radical Qaiite sect of Islam and dealt a significant blow, including the deaths of many Arab elites in Ifqiyah at the Battle of Nobles around 740 CE. Although attempts to suppress the revolt fell short of their goal, the disunited Berbers eventually disintegrated in 743 CE after failing to capture Kairouan, the capital of Ifqiyah. Nevertheless, Morocco was lost to the Umayyads. Al-Andalus, a province in the Iberian Peninsula, plunged into chaos, but Hisham managed to restore order under the leadership of the capable general Obad al-Rahman al-Ghafiqi. Nevertheless, Further expansion into Europe was halted following a defeat at the Battle of Tours in 732 CE, where the Franks, led by Charles Martel, emerged victorious. Hisham's death in 743 CE precipitated another crisis. Walid II, a son of Yazid II, ruled briefly from 743 to 744 CE before being overthrown and killed by Yazid III, the son of Walid I. This turmoil triggered the Third Fitna from 743 to 747 CE, the third civil war in Islamic history, as many tribes revolted during the chaos. However, Yazid III died just six months after his ascent to power, and his brother, Ibrahim, ruled for a mere two months before being ousted by the elderly Marwan II, a grandson of Marwan I. Marwan II, a strong military commander but lacking diplomatic skills, employed brute force to suppress uprisings, ultimately bringing an end to the Third Fitna in 747 CE. The Abbasids, an Arabian faction tracing their lineage to the Prophet's uncle Abbas, had garnered the support of the people of Khurasan in Iran. Marwan's empire, fatigued from years of conflict and suffering from economic decline, ineffective governors, and a war-weary army, was ill-prepared to face a widespread uprising. By late 749 CE, the black standards of the Abbasids had emerged throughout eastern territories, and resentful tribes that Marwan had subdued by force began to align with them. A decisive confrontation occurred near the Zab River in 750 CE. Marwan's army was defeated, and he was forced to flee, seeking to regroup his forces in the western provinces. However, the Abbasids intercepted him and ended his life. With Marwan's fall, Umaway rule came to an end, and the first Abbasid ruler, Abu Abbas, ascended as the new caliph in Kufa. The transition of power to the Abbasids proved brutal. All male Umaway members were slaughtered, with a few managing to escape to their hiding places. Umaway graves in Damascus were desecrated, and their remains were destroyed, except for Umar II, whose grave was spared due to his reputation. Subsequently, the Abbasids invited the surviving members to a dinner under the pretext of reconciliation. However, when seated at the table, Upon the signal of the new caliph, assassins entered the room and clubbed them to death. One member of the Umaway clan, Obad al ramanai a grandson of the capable Hisham, narrowly escaped the dreadful fate of his kin. He eluded the Abbasids and embarked on a perilous journey across the empire, eventually landing in Al-Andalus. There, he established the Emirate of Cordoba in 756 CE, a realm that rivaled the elegance and grandeur of the Abbasid realm. In conclusion, the Umayyads were the first dynasty to introduce the institution of the caliphate, making it an inheritable title. Their rule brought centralization and stability to the empire while continuing its rapid military expansion. Yet, the Umayyads were marred by their misdeeds, notably the actions of Yazid I, who remains one of the most reviled figures in Islamic history. The Umaway reputation suffered due to their perceived secularism and lavish lifestyles, particularly in the eyes of devout Muslims. The Umayyad's impact on Islam and the empire remains a topic of debate, as contemporary historians often praise their accomplishments, while many Muslim historians, although not universally, vilify them. Despite their flaws, the Umayyads were effective rulers, and their Arabization of the empire, albeit unintentional, contributed to the spread of Islam.